a great day. The weekend is upon us. It felt like a long week this week, man, but it's almost over. Um, today's episode of GH. I I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was a lot. It was a lot going on. I enjoyed it. Um, the drama continues. First of all, let me just talk about this first. They need to stop playing games and give Alexis her legal license back. I like Alexis as a lawyer. You know what I mean? I don't think Alexis knows how to do anything else. Like, law is in her blood. Like, that's her identity. I feel like they need to stop playing games and give her her degree, her uh, license back. Um, Because I can't really see Alexis as a CEO, businesswoman. I can't really see it. You know what I mean? I can't see it. But, I mean, if they don't give her her license back, maybe she can work at um, PCU. You know, to college, you know, teaching law, be a law professor. Maybe she could do that. You know, that's the closest thing to law. I mean, you know how you ever seen the show How to Get Away with Murder, how Annalise is a law professor and stuff, but she's still a lawyer. You know, that could be a good second career for Alexis, you know, long as she's not actually committing murders. <laughs> I'm just saying it could be a good career. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I can't see Alexis doing anything else. I really can't. I definitely can't. Um, Jordan, Jordan got on my nerves today. Like she was so self-righteous, so sanctimonious, like seriously, get off your pedestal for her to sit there and talk to Alexis. Like she knows Alexis told my, oh, you got three daughters. This is what you're teaching your daughters. What is she teaching her daughters? What are you talking about? Because she told the truth. Julian did not kidnap her. What do you want her to do? Lie just to help build your case? She's not going to lie. Julian did not kidnap her. She went willingly. They smashed and she was done with it. Um, I'm going to be honest about something. I really am. I'm going to be honest about something. I know a lot of people felt like the writers ruined Ju Julian and Alexis. I have to agree because I feel like all of that was stupid. Having him put a knife to her throat, it just ruined everything. But if Alexis wants to be with him and it's obvious that the two of them still want to be together, I don't have a problem with it. Honestly, I don't have a problem because prior to what happened on the pier and stuff with him putting a knife to her, I, I was their biggest advocate. I like them as a couple because the chemistry is definitely there. Can't nobody tell me that they don't see chemistry with the two of them. And the love is definitely there. Um, So if they get back together, I'm happy with it. And hopefully, you know, they can get their shit together. But I'm with them as a couple. You know, obviously, that's why the writers are putting trying to put them back together. I just felt like the writers was crazy to even do that shit. I mean, if you're going to bring Olivia Jerome back to the show... To get revenge on Julian, there could have been other ways of doing that without having to destroy a couple in order to do that. And I feel like that was their biggest, that was the biggest mistake that they could have made with that relationship was you basically destroyed a good relationship just to get Olivia Jerome, just to write her back into the show and try to, you know, write it as if, oh, she was blackmailing Julian to do it, da, 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 da. I felt like they could have did that better. If you're going to bring her on the show, you should have wrote it a lot better than what you did. I just felt like she could have easily just kidnapped Alexis or kidnapped Sam or, you know, something to get Julian's attention. You know what I mean? To do other things that she wanted him to do. But putting a wife to it, putting a knife to his wife's throat, I felt like it was overboard. And I felt like, you know, that was way too dramatic. Like, you shouldn't even went that route because now a lot of the fans don't want to see them back together again because of that. And now you're trying to whitewash what he did by blaming it on Olivia. See, that was their biggest problem. They should have just wrote it a different way instead of trying to ruin this couple and now trying to put them back together by whitewashing what he did. I feel like that's dumb. That should not have happened. I felt like they should have definitely went another route with that. Me personally, that's my opinion. I felt like they should have did it differently because even though they did that, I still want Alexis and Julian together because I like them together. Um, and he was legitimately trying to get out the mob, so... You know, got to, you know, give props for that. It's more than what Sonny does, but <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so anyway, I felt like the guy that Alexis was talking to about the bar and stuff like that, about getting her license back, he was a jackass. Like, he just seemed like he had a little vendetta against her. I'm like, okay, what the hell is your problem? But anyway, 
I like the scene with Sonny and Ale- um Sonny and uh, Ava at the preschool. Um, the lady basically tried to play hardball, told them they don't got no room for Avery at the school or whatever. Apparently, that's the same uh school that Rocco went to when he was um in preschool. So then Ava tried to basically say, well, we'll give you money or whatever. And the lady was like, you know, money's not the issue or whatever. So Sonny felt like the issue was his, allega- you know, allegations against him being a mob boss and this, that, and the third. So he tried to reassure her that those are just rumors and allegations and stuff. He pretty much laid it on thick with that lady. Like that speech he gave was just way over the top. He was like straight up kissing her ass like his head was so far up her ass if you look down her throat you could see what she had for lunch i'm telling you that's how far up there he was i'm just saying um but he laid it on thick and the lady said you know she gonna pull some strings to see if she could get avery into the school all the while ava was basically taunting sunny about his uh dalliance with martina at the haunted star and Sonny basically threatened her and told her she better back the hell up out of his personal business. So Ava went to the Metro Court and bumped into Martina. And she recognized her from the Hornet Star, being with Sonny. She recognized her. And then she was really shocked when she found out Martina was Carly's divorce attorney. <laughs> so you could see the wheels in her head turning. And before Ava could say anything, this is what I said out loud. Like, I was just thinking out loud. I was like, Ava, if you're smart, blackmail her into being your custody lawyer. So that way she can get you custody or joint custody of Avery and you won't tell her secret and you could potentially get her disbarred. So Ava did exactly what I was thinking she should do. She tried to talk to her about being her lawyer for the custody hearing. I said, there you go, Ava. You got leverage now. She knows she holds the cards now against Sonny. She knows she got leverage now. She know damn well she do. And I was hoping she would have, you know, used that to her, you know, advantage. To hell with Scott Baldwin. Like, seriously, Scott basically told her he's not going to help her get custody of Avery because of the pill situation. I'm like, seriously, Scott, what kind of ditzy ass lawyer are you? You just said there's no proof of nothing. So why not try to get her some custody? Dumb, dumb. Hell, she's paying you. Do what the hell she told you to do. But I'm glad she got. I hope she do blackmail Martina. Um, Even though I, I like Ava, but I still feel like her situation with the pills do need to come out and she do need to pay the price. Um, So anyway, Michael. He goes to Carly, looks at the divorce papers, and he's still pleading his case defending Sonny, trying to get her to back off and come to a compromise. Here's my thing about this, and I'm being brutally honest. I like Michael. I like the character of Michael, but here's the thing. I feel like he needs to mind his business. Jocelyn already had her say. She's already on Team Carly, obviously, and I respect that, you know, even though she's young and should not be involved in this because she's way younger than Michael and she should not be involved in this, but I respect the person having her say because she is Carly's daughter and she's old enough to, you know, speak her mind, so I, I give her that and I give Michael that too. You are allowed to have your opinion and to have your say. Michael Ben had his opinion on this back when Carly went to the Quartermain Mansion and brought him food and stuff and they talked about this. I felt like that was his one and only time to have his say his piece and give his opinion. No more should you keep going to Sonny and Carly about this. I feel like Michael needs to butt out and mind his business. You already had your opinion. You had your say. Back off. I, and the reason I feel like this is because it's not his place. Okay, granted, those are his parents. I get that. But I, like I said, you should have a one-time say in this. That's it. Say your piece one time. After that, shut up. Because obviously Carly already told him from the beginning she's not backing down. Stop intervening in their personal affairs. Just back off. He needs to get his own life and stop meddling in theirs. Well, not meddling, but stop trying to be the peacekeeper. These people are your parents. They're the adults. You know what I mean? Like, if they can't act like adults, that's their business. You know? He needs to just focus on his own life. Like, Michael is, what, 25, 26 years old, 27? I feel like he needs to have a life outside his parents. You know? Finally. 
just get you a life outside of Carly and Sonny. And, you know, I just got a little irritated because he keeps going to them, trying to talk them out of this and trying to reason with them. And I feel like it's just you're just beating a dead horse. Like you could lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So they don't want to compromise and they don't want to. Hey, let the chips fall where they may. They want to go to court and duke it out. Let them. Fuck it. What you going to do about it? It's nothing. All you can do is talk. And I feel like he's talking way too much to them about this. And it, you just need to say it one time. And if they don't want to hear it, butt out. It's not affecting you, per se. I mean, you're an adult. It's not really affecting you. What them getting a divorce got to do? Hell, you've seen all the divorces already that they went through. So this does not affect you at all. I mean, you're the CEO of a multinational company. You make your own money. You don't live under their roof. So how is this affecting you? It's not affecting you at all, not even emotionally, because he's been through this shit with them 10 times. So it's not really affecting him. I just think he needs to just back off and let them do what they got to do. Um... He tried to talk to Sonny about it, and Sonny basically declared war. Hey, let him go to war. Fuck it. Um, there's something else I want to bring up about that preschool meeting that they were at, Sonny and Ava. The way he was giving that speech and basically didn't even bring up the fact that Ava's a good mother, he basically brought up Carly saying Carly's a good mother. That's not going to look good on you basically praising your wife and not your baby mama. <laughs> like, that's not going to look good getting her into that school. Like, you're praising your soon-to-be ex-wife instead of your baby mama, who actually helps you raise Avery as well. You know what I mean? I just felt like that was in poor taste, and Ava was obviously pissed about it, as she should be. But anyway, moving on from that, um, this whole Finn-Brad situation, Brad is starting to piss me off. Seriously, he's really starting to irritate me. Where the hell is Lucas? Because I really want Lucas to see what kind of a husband he got. Like, seriously, because he's just irritating me. Like, he's still bitching about the fact that Finn gave away that money for the, um, for the cure that they found for that disease. And he donated the money to the hospital so that way they could keep the doors open. And Brad is still bitching because he didn't get his luxurious condo. Like, seriously, Brad, think about it like this. Had Finn not donated that money to the hospital and gave you the money and you bought your condo, you know what that would mean? The hospital would be shut down right now. All the nurses, all the doctors, all the janitors, all the, everybody. They would be out of a fucking job. And they all need that money. They got families. A lot of them got kids. Look at Elizabeth. She got three kids. They all got bills. They got kids. They can't afford to lose their job. And sometimes when you lose your job, you don't know how long you're going to be out of work. You know what I mean? It could be months. It could be a year. You never know. So think about it like this. Had he gave Brad that money and Brad bought that condo, that would mean you're out of a job now, Lucas is out of a job, and guess what? If you're out of a job, how the hell are you going to maintain a condo if you're out of a job? How are you going to continue to pay the bills every month if you're out of a job? Think about it like that. See, he's not thinking. That's his problem. He's thinking with money, and that he's thinking green instead of, you know, reality. That's just, he's not really thinking about the real, you know, being realistic about shit. You can't afford and keep up a condo if you're out of a job now, dumb dumb. Now, if you have the money to buy a condo and you still have your job, you can keep up the payments. Hello, stupid. So Hayden and Finn basically told uh, Griffin that they that Finn was being set up, and he wanted to know by who. So Hayden came up with an idea to basically make it known that they're giving Finn a third drug test after he done failed too. That way they can get a reaction out of somebody. Now, if somebody gives off a strong reaction, then that means that that person is setting him up. And long and behold, guess who obviously gave out that reaction? Who played into their game? Brad. Brad played into their game. Bitching and complaining about how he failed that test twice. He should be fired. I don't understand Brad and, and, and Dr. Obrecht. I mean, I get Brad's little dumbass feud with him over that stupid condo but what the fuck is obrex problem with him he never did anything to her like what is her real issue with him like seriously what is the problem because her and her and brad were happy because tracy's no longer on the hospital board so that means that he doesn't have the support system that he did have when tracy was a part of the board but i'm like you still have michael michael's still a board member and you still have monica's chief of staff all they need now is another board member to replace Tracy on a board that's on their side. That's all they need. Like, seriously. 
and Finn is going to still be there. I know some people, and I've read comments on like Daytime Confidential and stuff like that. I read comments, people saying that they can't stand Finn, they can't stand Hayden, why are they on the show? I know, you know, you don't like them or whatever. I'm giving them a chance personally because I do kind of like them. And besides, without them, you really wouldn't have all these hospital scenes. You know what I mean? Like, we're getting more hospital scenes mainly because of Finn and Hayden. So I'm happy about that, too. Because if it wasn't for them, we would be seeing less and less at a hospital. We might see it here and here because of Griffin or whatever. But without Finn and Hayden, you wouldn't really see so much of it. You know what I mean? So I'm happy for that. You know? Um, but overall, this was a good show. You know, this was a really good episode. Um, I enjoyed it. Some people might not, but I actually enjoyed it. Um, so anyway, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I will see all of you Monday. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, and if I forgot to talk about something, just let me know in the comments. We'll talk about it. I'll give you my opinion on it. So yeah, have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Don't drink too much. Do not go out partying all night. I'm just saying, unless you worked all week and you, and you ready to turn up. So have a good time. Be safe. See you all Monday. Have a great weekend.